My name is Ragnar Daniskjöld. I was born in the pages of Atlas Shrugged. Growing up in Norway, my father was a priest who instilled in me a desire for truth and justice. But I rejected his mystical beliefs and decided to pursue philosophy to explore the nature of reality, knowledge, ethics, politics and beauty, not as revealed by God, but as pursued by man through reason. Like my Viking ancestors before me, I ventured west to America, enrolled at Patrick Henry University to study with the great philosopher Dr. Hugh Axton. There I met my two closest friends, John and Francisco. Though we each came from different continents, we became brothers of the mind. After graduation, my friends pursued their careers in business while I pursued my PhD in philosophy. My future as a professor and an intellectual looked bright, but around me, the country was falling apart. The government was waging war on private enterprise, on innovation, on the currency that was the lifeblood of the economy, demonizing the successful, raising confiscatory taxes, issuing crippling regulation, seizing private property, and launching vast new welfare schemes, calling on citizens to sacrifice for the greater good, all in the name of altruism. Every year since graduation, John, Francisco, and I have met, and each year there was more and more bad news. This year was different. This year, we made a plan. It was the era of big labor with unions organizing workers to go on strike. We asked ourselves, what if the people who create the businesses, invent the cures, compose the masterpieces, what if the creative geniuses of the world went on strike? It was a daring, brazen plan, one that would eventually break down the entire corrupt system. Only eventually wasn't good enough for me. I wouldn't run, wait and hide. I would fight. I set about recruiting men who shared my values. Navy veterans, merchant marines whose companies had been nationalized. We seized what would become flagships of secret force to target the looter states of the world, strictly following the code I devised, never to take the life of another ship's crew if we could avoid it. If I had to sink another vessel, I first set the crew adrift in lifeboats. We never took private ships, nor took private property. We did not engage naval ships unless they engaged us first. Governments branded me a pirate, a terrorist, a criminal. But when robbery becomes the purpose of corrupt governments, then it's an outlaw who has to become a policeman. Yet, in a sense, I was also an assassin. And the man, or myth, in my sights was Robin Hood, who claimed to rob the rich to give to the poor. I went after these spoils of redistribution and returned them to the productive. I liberated treasure, sold it on black markets in return for gold, and deposited it with Midas Mulligan, another member of our strike whose accounts matched to the penny of every dollar taken in income taxes, sales taxes, and property taxes from the producers who'd earned it. On one of those trips to deposit gold, I discovered the greatest treasure of my life, Kay Lutlove. You've seen her in films, read about her in the tabloids, and so you may think you know her, but I promise you don't. Her glamorous movie star facade hid a fierce philosophical intellect and a passionately loyal heart, loyal enough to marry me, filled with danger on the high seas. We bore these risks because we do not think that tragedy is our natural state. We do not live in chronic dread of disaster. We do not expect disaster until we have specific reason to expect it. And when we encounter it, we're free to fight it. It's not happiness, but suffering that we consider unnatural. It's not success, but calamity that we regard as the abnormal exception in human life. Would I avoid calamity? Would I be caught? Would our strike succeed, or would the looters triumph? Who is John Galt? You'll find the answers to those questions and discover a purpose all your own in the pages of Atlas Shrugged.